What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're gonna to be going over match states, how we can set them, what they mean, and how we can use them in our game. So specifically, we are going to be able to load into a game, and if I come over here in my world outliner and look at the default game mode BP, I can look at something called the match state, which will show us kind of the state of the match, as it is where the name comes from, and it will show us what's going on this it will allow us to do quite a few different things in the game itself. We can then manage logic based off what state the match is in. So in this case, you can see the state is in the match active state, which is when our attacks and our logic is going to be able to flow. All right, we're gonna be able to use commands and attack our opponent, walk around the stage, do all this good stuff. Now, I'm not going to really restrict any of that logic here today, but I want to show you how to set up all the match states so that you can use them to your heart's content. So you can see, I will defeat my opponent, and we'll go to round over. And so this is like the time between rounds here. We do fight, it becomes match active again. You can see the timer starts and everything. All this stuff is working without a match state, but the match state can be used to keep things really clean and uh, you can definitely modify the logic to work off of these as opposed to arbitrary timings and delays. All right, so we'll load back into the game. Go to the default game mode BP early this time. You'll see it starts in no state, which is the default, and that's accurate because we're not in the game at this moment. And then it goes to stage intro once we're here, and then character entrances. This will allow us to perform logic like skip the stage intro and the character entrances because when we press the start button or whatever button we want to skip these sequences with, if the match state is in these states, we can then determine, oh, we should skip this, or we should skip those, or we should pause the game. And so we can actually change the logic based on what state the match is in, not just for a functionality of like what can the characters do, but also what can the players do, and what is required of them to, to get to the same spot, depending on the match state. So it's really, really helpful, really useful for a ton of things. So we're not going to go over too many specifics of like changing over our system to use the match state here, but we're going to set it up and I'm going to tell you how to get the match state in the correct spot for pretty much every state I can think of in the game right now. Uh, you could add more or take away some if you don't need them, up to you. And then you can go from there. Uh, we'll be using it throughout the series when we see fit. So... We'll definitely be using it, but basically it's going to give you a lot more freedom and you can decide when you want to use it and when you need to or don't need to. So anyway, guys, before we get started, I just want to let you know we're on episode 123 of the Fighting Games Tutorial Series. So if you want to get caught up, link this icon in the top right corner right here, which is the Fighting Game Playlist, so you can see everything we've done to get to this point. We have many episodes to go. But we're doing great work, and if you're interested in getting caught up, there it is. We'll also link this episode right here, which is the previous episode, it is very useful because we can use the player controller today to set up some logic with our start button so we can start preparing for things like skipping stage intros and skipping character entrances. And this is all the like quote unquote correct way because we can manage it based out of the controller and not the character so we can access this logic whenever we want to all right guys and now we're gonna get started so we're gonna start in our code today there's two main things we're gonna be editing which is our game mode and our base player controller we'll start in the game mode and I'll show you the match state that we created so in fighter template game mode, I've gone ahead and I've made a new enum called ematch state, and I've added all these variables. You don't have to use all these. A lot of these are up to you, but I'll explain them really quickly. So no state is basically anytime we're not in the game. Stage intro is going to be when the stage is being shown off at the start. Character entrance. You could have two character entrances if you'd like, or even more. It's up to you. They can all be under this one character entrance enum, or you could have multiple. Like uh, a good example, as people have mentioned to me before, some of the banter that goes on in some games, such as Mortal Kombat, where they'll have one character speak, the other character respond, and then the first character speak in response to their response. 
So you could have an entire flow here if you'd like. Really, you only need one to, you know, skip, be able to skip that whole sequence. But again, it's entirely up to you. Match begin is for me when there's the round start fight. And then match active is the actual time where the match is going to be spending the majority of the time so it's where you're going to be attacking your opponent draining their health to zero round over is once the uh, one of the characters has lost a round it actually sends it back to match active once the round is once the next round starts for me but again up to you how you want to handle that match over i don't actually have set up today but this would technically be when we are done with the game done with that match Character defeat is if we're if we want to have character defeat sequences and victory sequences, you could use this. Character victory is when the character is doing their victory animation, and then match results could be like an ending screen if you if you have the stats from the match or something like that. It could even just be when you're at the end of fight screen. So that's what all the match states are. You can take some away or add more depending on what you want. We're going to need a variable that stores the value of the match state. So it's as simple as this. We're just going to make an ematch state variable. Definitely make this one U property and editable in Blueprint because we're going to be able to change it in the Blueprint today. Let's go to our fighter template game mode.cpp and you'll see that I default the match state. So I just set it to the default value, which is the no state option. Now, the game mode resets when changing levels, depending on uh, if you're level streaming or not. So this will reset in between levels or when you return to the main menu. Uh, if you're not streaming, if you're not using level streaming, which is perfectly fine. If you are, you will want to reset this when you exit back to the menu, things like that. I've also made three functions. Now, we're not going to be getting into them today. That's actually for the next episode. But I will show you how they can be useful and where we're going to call them from the base player controller. That way you can start getting an idea of where the match state can really come in handy. So if you'd like, go ahead and make these now. There are three blueprint implementable events. You could do these in code as well. Uh, I just did them as implementable events because we have our stage intro and our character intros done in Blueprint and the animation Blueprint. So I think doing them in Blueprint is easier to handle them, but it's up to you. You can easily change them to code and use them. So I have skip stage intro, skip character intros, and pause game. Now pause game, we've already covered that in pretty good depth as well, but we can we can do it through the controller and make it even better so I have these three and again they're blueprint implementable events so I don't fill out any logic for them it just means you can call them and fill out their logic in the blueprint you can also call them from code Now, before we get into where we're setting the match state and some other places where we're going to use it, let's actually look at our base player controller.h. And I'm going to scroll down. I had this thing that I showed off at the very end um, of this code class called call perform start input logic. And I had never shown you guys what start uh, perform start input logic was. I just mentioned that it was a function that was in my fighter template character before, and it was bound to my open pause menu, or basically my start key. Now, uh, I don't actually have this function in the character anymore. It's better in the controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Even though this is all commented out, it doesn't matter anyway. I'm just showing you, I don't have that function in the character. What I've actually done is I've just added this function to the controller, okay? So really, this is just like a function on its own. We're not calling a new function in the character anymore. So perform start input logic, okay? You can make this now if you haven't already from the previous episode because today we're going to actually do more logic with it. And instead of doing what I was doing where I was just checking if there was a possessed pawn and then calling it, what we actually want to do is do the logic right here in the controller. We don't need a pawn to do this. That's kind of the whole point of this function being done in the controller. Okay, 
So you can see I have perform star input logic and this is how it looks now. I still have my log if you want to use that and test and make sure that it's working. But what I can do is I can actually use the game mode state to determine what logic should happen when this input was pressed. So if this is the start button and we have a stage intro and we're on the stage intro, we should skip the stage intro. If we're during the if we're uh, at the character entrances or the character intros, we should skip them. And then same with the uh, if it's neither of those, we should just pause the game. All right, so how we're going to do this is we're going to get the game mode. We're going to get the world, get the authority game mode, which gets the game mode from the server, which is where the game mode is stored. We're going to cast it to our game mode, fighter template game mode. And if this succeeds, we're going to set it to this variable. Now, you have to make sure that you've included fighter template game mode in your base player controller to make sure that you can actually cast that type. So if you haven't already, go ahead and do that now. Then, assuming this succeeds, it's going to go into this if statement. We're then going to grab the match state variable, which we set up just in here. This guy that I was just telling you about right here. And we're going to check its value against the match state enum directly. So we're going to say if it's equal to the stage intro, then call game mode skip stage intro. If it is equal to the character entrance, call game mode skip character intros. Otherwise, pause the game. And now this will actually allow us to fill out these events in the blueprints and then skip the stage intros, skip the character intros, or pause the game. So that's how the player controller can be super useful and the match state can be super useful. Now let's go into the engine and we'll go ahead and set our match state in a bunch of different places as we see fit. So first thing I actually want to do is go to our base function library and make a set match state function so we can call this from anywhere. Yes, we could just grab the game mode, set the match state, but this will allow us to set it from level blueprints, animation blueprints, and a bunch of other spots that we're going to need so that we can just set the match state to whatever value we want whenever we want. So if you've been following the series, you will be familiar with the base function library most likely, in which case you can just go into it and add a new function. If you're not, however, I can show you very quickly what I did. It is basically a blueprint function library here. And you can just add functions to this and you can call them from pretty much anywhere in the project. So make a new function, call it set match state or something similar. Have it taken an input parameter of the enum we made in the game mode. and I just called the parameter match state. Now, all I have to do is set the variable in the game mode, but to do it, it is a little bit different. Since this works from anywhere, you have to get the world context and cast it to the correct type. So the way we do it is like this. We get game mode. It's going to ask for world context. You can drag off, get world context. You can then cast to your default game mode BP. And then off of this, you will be able to set match state. And instead of the function that I already have, I'm going to use this variable here. Oops. And we're going to set it to the match state passed in to the function. This is my function here. And then I can compile and save it. And then we're going to use this wherever it is that we want. So like I said, by default, it's going to have that default value, which is no state, and that's perfectly fine with me. I'm not going to change it. But in your level blueprints where you have the uh, intros here, you know, we were setting our, our music type and playing the music, and then we were playing the stage intro and all that good stuff. Before, Right before we start playing the stage intro, I set the match state to be stage intro. And the way you do it is you literally call set match state. And then you're going to just pick the one you want. So I want stage intro. It's that simple. You don't have to change anything else. I'm even going to put this in my other level blueprint that has a stage intro at the moment, which is the Trail of the Wise. So I'm just going to move over everything a little bit. So I can put this in. 
just like that. And now the stage intro will be set correctly, or the match state will be set correctly during both of the stage intros that I currently have. Now, the animation blueprint will be the next spot we handle this because I want the character intros to either, it should either go to character intro match state immediately after the stage intro, or it can go based off the animation, like once one of the intros is playing, we automatically know. So a good way that I found to do it, is very easy and will work 100% of the time, is that we have our NMBP set up to have one frame worth of the idle in the entrance, and then we have the entrance sequence here once it is ready, once the characters are ready for the entrance. So with that in mind, what I did is I put a start transition event, but you could put it anywhere. You could even put an notify on the entrance animation. And so uh, I called it start character entrances. I didn't have this before, but now what will happen is I can fill out this event. And as soon as we see that there is this transition occurring from either player, it's going to set the match state to be this. So we can very simply go into our event graph Look for start character entrances right here, the event. And then we can just call set match state. And we're going to set character entrance as the one here. It will technically do it for each character that has their entrance played, but it's not an issue because we're grouping them together right now. So all the character entrances play at once, uh, you know, one after the other. And then this sequence is perfectly fine for that entire time. Now, once the character entrances are done, we should go into some sort of like match begin. Remember, I have match begin. Match begin is when the text is up on the HUD and all that. So I actually put this in the NMBP as well because our logic for it is already in the NMBP. So this is a little bit gross the way we set up this logic. And this is one of the things we'll be adjusting with our match state, but I'm not gonna do it in today's episode. It's just a simple one node addition here, so it's okay to leave for now. I just want to show you how to get all the match states correct, and then we can go over fixing up logic to make it neater and nicer to use. So we have our mutant finished entrance here, which plays when... So if we go into our entrance animation, we have mutant finished entrance, which is basically the point at which we're ready to go to the next entrance or to begin the match if all characters have used their entrance. We set this up a long time ago, but essentially we make sure that both players have used their entrance. And if they have, then we go and use the regular camera and start up the uh, screen messages for the beginning of the round. Right before we trigger those screen messages, I was setting the match state to match begin. So I did this in per uh, on purpose to make it a little bit easier for you to see. I made it nice and ugly for you. That way you could see what we were doing. And now I've cleaned it up. So here we go. The match state is now match begin right before we trigger the HUD messages to say, you know, ready fight and allow the characters to move. All right. With that done, what we need to do is figure out when match active should be a thing. So if we go into our default game mode BP, Round start and round end get called when uh, the player has either lost all their health or when we're ready to begin a new round. So match active is at the very end of round start and round over is at the very end of round end. Now I don't do match over at the moment, but it'd be very easy to add it. You could just do it uh, when the game is won so like you could do it in trigger match win effects. You could also do it in the actual code. You could set the match state when the character wins the match. Right here. So you have some options. Upon rematch, you'll want to reset that if you do end up doing that. And then character defeat, character victory, and match results you can all also do if you'd like. Again, none of that stuff has been set up yet. But feel free to set it up if you'd like. All right. Now, under default game mode BP, feel free to get ready to put your events in here. 
your skip stage intro, skip character intros, and pause game. Now these are going to be filled out in the next episode. We're going to go over all of these and how they work with the match state. So how we can set things properly depending on uh, what match state we're in, which you already saw in the code how we can do it, but we need to do this in the blueprint and actually access the correct sequence and skip it. And we need to access the animations that we want and bring them along to the next section, all these things. And this is going to take over our regular pause game logic, just so you're aware, because we did override it in the player controller. If you don't have your pause functionality in, then you won't be able to pause your game until uh, this gets fixed up and we add it to the controller. Not necessarily an issue, but just be aware if you are having issues with your pause, you can either revert it or just wait until you, you update this to work through the controller instead of the character BP. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. That's how we can set up our match state. And we can actually follow through and know exactly where we are in our game at all times. That way we can determine different functionality that we have access to. Such as, again, pausing, skipping, all these other options. And it's going to give us a lot more freedom over the game. But more importantly, it's going to allow us to edit the game more easily in the future without any sorts of any kinds of hacks or things like that so anyway guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed please subscribe there's more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do i can really appreciate it it's completely free i want to give a huge shout out to my youtube membership and patreon supporters and subscribers thank you guys so much for everything that you've done I'm really grateful, and I really, really can't wait to show you everything we can do with this series. If you have any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to help you out, and it's completely free. And anyway, guys, that's all I got, so thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.